Okay, so in the, in the last video, we tried to kind of give a rough introduction, sort of general motivation to this, uh, you know, idea of a derivative without really saying anything particularly precise, right? Other than the derivative has something to do with slopes of tangent lines and that this can somehow be tied into things like rates of change, like a velocity, right? Um, so where it comes in is, you know, if we, if we had this line between those two points, and let me try to draw that in, something like that, right? Those lines are pretty close, but they're not quite the same. Um, so for the, uh, what's called the secant line, between the points C, F of C, and x, f of x, um, well, what's the slope of that secant line, okay? So, well, slope is simply delta y over delta x, and our change in y, right, is simply f of x, minus f of c, the change in x is x minus c, okay? So we have this idea of the secant line passing through those two points, and this is sort of, a, it's, it's like an average rate of change over a very small interval, right? We want to think of this delta x as very small. Um, and so if we keep shrinking it, right, what's going to happen if we keep shrinking it is we're going to get a limit, right? And, and of course, we spent a lot of time looking at zero over zero limits, right? Back when we were looking at analytic limits, um, a lot of the limits we dealt with were of this zero over zero form. And you can see exactly why, because um, as you let x approach c, both the numerator and denominator are going to go to zero, right? f of c minus f of c on the top, c minus c on the bottom. Um, and you know, when, when people were first, you know, trying to understand the derivatives, like people like Newton and Leibniz, they're working through the idea of the derivative, uh, using it very successfully to solve problems from, from physics, from astronomy. Um, a lot of people were really critical of this idea um, that, you know, you could, you know, be in some sense almost dividing by zero. Of course, uh, the machinery of limits lets us understand how that division by zero works. Um, but there was a time when this wasn't really well understood, right? Calculus existed long before people had a good understanding of, of how limits should work. Um, but people were able to kind of figure this out and work with it even though they didn't have careful definitions of things. Um, now we know how to make a definition. Um, so for the derivative at a point, um, so we denote this by f prime, so if our point is, say, um, x equals c, we'll denote this by f prime of c. And it's given by, so here's one way of writing down the formula, f prime of c. It's going to be defined as a limit. It's going to be defined as a limit of this ratio as x approaches c. the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And this is one of two ways that you can write down the definition of the derivative. Um, there's another way that you can rewrite the limit, which is going to be more useful once we get to talking about the derivative as a function, right? Um, for derivative at a point, either version works. Um, the next version is going to be a little bit more convenient um, in a bit. So what we do is we take this delta x, and I'm not sure who started this tradition, but the tradition is to use h to denote the change in x. So we'll use h to denote this change. Um, and that means that this x here, x is then c plus h, right? It's the original point plus a little bit. Um, and so the other way to say that x is approaching c is to say that this difference is going to zero. And so we could also write this as 
the limit as h approaches 0, f of c plus h minus f of c over x minus c, well, that's just the difference. It's just h. And you probably recognize this as a difference quotient, right? There's a reason why we looked at difference quotients and computing limits of difference quotients, because that's how you compute derivatives, okay? And, and so this, this limit, what is this quantity that you're computing? Well, it is exactly the slope of this tangent line, right? Um, and there's the usual kind of catch here. There will be situations in which this limit fails to exist. If it does exist, we say our function is differentiable at that point. If it doesn't, our function isn't differentiable. Um, and we'll see as we work through some examples what it looks like when a function fails to be differentiable. One of the things we'll see is that differentiable functions are always continuous. So any discontinuity is also a point where, the, where this derivative is not going to exist. Um, but also continuous functions that, that aren't sort of smooth, if they have kind of bends or corners or kinks in them, they will also fail to have a derivative because um, they don't have a well-defined tangent line at those points.